This is the book of Job, chapter 39, verse 17. Because Yahweh hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, pushing this doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel who were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom. I wanted to chime in on this uh, Kevin Samuels uh, thing that's going on. Oh. Uh, story in terms of his uh, untimely death that's, if that's what you want to call it well it's not really untimely because <laughs> the Heavenly Father took him out that was a judgment so Salakia for that it was a judgment okay because the Heavenly Father is responsible for the matters of death as the scripture says and I'm roughly paraphrasing but um, what inspired me to do this is the number of um, women that are celebrating this man's passing as if it's an occasion to celebrate okay now granted he was of the world and i wasn't a fan of his per se but i definitely enjoyed his content in that it was based on truth okay it wasn't based on his opinion it wasn't based on um anything other than facts and truth with respect to the modern day woman okay and even when he was alive it was just mind-blowing to see the number of women who had bona fide hate for the man because he was so forthcoming about the reality of uh, the situation concerning the order or lack thereof with the modern day woman okay now, he basically said that women were out of order, okay? They weren't feminine. They were self-centered. They were entitled. They were unreasonable in their expectations of a man. I mean, everything he said was true. And any reasonable person, anyone with a half-reasonable mind, would be able to say, you know what, and look at the situation objectively for what it is and say, you know what, that's constructive criticism, and he's absolutely right, okay? See, you would have to be able to look at a situation for what it is. Again, you need an objective eye to be able to do that, right? And see, women aren't able to do that because, as the scripture just said, that I read to you, I'm going to read it again, because Yahweh hath deprived her of wisdom, neither have he imparted to her understanding. So women are inherently devoid of wisdom, okay, and understanding. Not all of them, obviously, but this is the Heavenly Father's doing. He had his, his hand in this, okay? So no matter how much wisdom you speak to these women, they're going to reject what you have to say, okay? And if they lack the wisdom, they're going to lack the understanding. They're not going to understand words of wisdom coming out of your mouth. That's why there's so much disorder amongst women in general. Okay? See, women are led, in, women are led by their emotions solely. Okay? Very few women in this world, especially in 2022, are able to look at things objectively uh, very few women are reasonable okay very few women have sound judgment okay and these are things that are necessary for survival right let's read this one more time because this is very deep and it's very profound and you can see this especially having been in this truth you can see this in, in, in our women especially amongst you Negroes Latinos and Native Americans Okay, because Yahweh hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. Okay, all the wisdom that came out of Kevin Samuel's mouth, it went in one ear and out the other. 
and all these women could find themselves doing is becoming upset and angry and getting emotional about what he said. Okay? And they got emotional and upset about it because it, it hit close to home. Okay? The truth hurts, as they say. Okay? And again, I was never a, a big fan of his, per se, but his content was right on because, you know, he told the truth. Now, granted, the men of the Lord, the apostles and the elders and the brothers out there on highways and hedges and making the epistles, long before Kevin Samuels came along, these brothers had been teaching this, okay, about our women being out of order, okay? So this is not a new thing, all right? But he sort of went mainstream with it. And, you know, the brother, he had a certain sense of charisma about him, you know, and, and it made it easy to listen to because he didn't hold back and he didn't um, hold back punches, you know, well, just like the men of the Lord. And it's funny because the men of the Lord are saying the things, but I've yet to see one Israelite male with a million and a half subscribers like Kevin Samuels. So what's the problem here? OK, this is where the true wisdom lies. OK, in this truth. OK, coming from the men of the Lord. And I'm not sticking a feather in our hat. Because this is not of us. This is not our doing. This is the Heavenly Father's through the Spirit, through His Holy Spirit. Okay? He endowed us with, with wisdom. Okay? He endowed us with wisdom. But um, it, it's amazing to me how the modern day women, and even the women back then in the 70s, couldn't see through the ruse that Esau Edom perpetrated against them with that whole feminist movement. It's, it's amazing to me they couldn't just see right through it for what it was, okay? Because they essentially fell into the hands of the devil, right? That's what they did. They fell into the hands of the devil. He's able to mold and manipulate their minds, change the way they see the world, change the way they see their, their Israelite man, Right? Change the way they see their own children, as evidenced by the millions, the, the 60 million something odd abortions that these women have had over the past 50, 60 years. Right? They were conditioned to hate their children. They were hate, uh, conditioned to hate the seed that was planted in them by their own men, their, by, by their husbands. Right. And that's what that's what made them. That's what made it so easy for them to be able to 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 abort their children, their flesh and blood. OK. And there has to be hatred within you in order to do that. And where did that where did that come from? It came from Esau Edom's philosophies. OK. His policies, his doctrines. OK. His wine, if you will. And our people, gladly, especially our women, they gladly and proudly drank of that cup of wine. Filthy abominations, right? And they're still drinking from that same cup today. And it's intoxicated and corrupted their minds to the point that they don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. They don't know good from evil. They don't know right from left. They don't know up from down. Okay? They don't realize just how bad they have been played. Right? With this whole feminist movement. Okay? And like I said, they just played right into the hands of the devil. And it allowed him to further destroy your people. Right? Right? But you still haven't figured it out. That's the scary thing. You've had half a century to look at feminism for what it was, and you still can't see how inherently destructive it is. Right? I mean, you should be able to just sit back and observe. Okay? Just like a scientist, you got to sit back, you got to evaluate your, your evidence. 
okay? You have to make observations. You got to document it, okay? Compare, contrast, all right? And when it's all said and done, you should be able to walk away with having gained insight in the specimen that you study, okay? Or you should have been able to gain some insight in your environment that you're in, okay? Because you got eyes and you got ears, you have to make observations, okay? That's where wisdom comes from. And it's just further proof that the Heavenly Father has deprived the Israelite woman of wisdom, along with the rest of the women in the world, okay? Because they have also drank from the cup of Esau Edom with respect to feminism, okay? And they don't see just how wicked and how destructive, okay, that whole ideology is, all right? Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 29, verse 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, for shall the work say of him that made it he made me not, or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding. Okay? See, Esau, Edom turned things upside down. So everything is out of order, right? Everything is in complete disarray, especially here in Babylon the Great, right? But this comes with the territory of being... Um, uh, placed in a place, uh, placed in a place like uh, Babylon the Great, right? A land of confusion. What else would you expect dwelling in a land of confusion? Confusion, right? It's called the name of uh, the land of confusion, all right? Babal simply means confusion in Hebrew, in Paleo Hebrew. So, what would you expect to find in this land called confusion? Everything to be upside down, right to be wrong, up to be down, right? Good to be evil and vice versa, right? Things viewed as light considered dark and vice versa, right? Man can become woman, woman can become man. It's okay to touch little kitties, okay? It's okay to touch animals, beasts, right? You see, again, Kevin Samuels was off, okay, in that he was outside of the truth, all right? He knew he was an Israelite, but he was a proud man, right? He was of the world, so he was blinded like everybody else. But he did have wisdom, enough wisdom to know that these women are out of order, okay? And he sort of brought that to light, and he did so. You know, I'd say rather eloquently, you know, <laughs> the brother had a way with words and he was sharp. He was, he was sharp. All right. So, you know, you see these women out of order. They're mad. They're angry because, you know, we're hip to their behavior. We're, we're, we're hip to um, how they view us and how they view the world. Okay, we see them for what they are. They're petulant, spoiled little children, unfortunately. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. Again, it's upside down because this is Babylon the Great. It will not be that way in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, pursuant to the scriptures. Because the Heavenly Father is a God of order, not disorder. Satan is a God of disorder and confusion and wickedness. He's adverse to the Heavenly Father. He undermines all order of the heavenly father okay see satan was able to influence the woman first right then adam of course you know followed his wife eve okay but he corrupted the woman right because she was corruptible the weaker vessel okay and that's more proof that the Heavenly Father deprived, deprived her of wisdom, a woman. Okay? Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Okay? Because this talks about the order of things. Right? 
And again, this is another thing in so many words that he talked about. And again, the men of the Lord were talking about all this first, okay? It only went mainstream, per se, when, uh, you know, Kevin Samuels got on online and YouTube, you know, because people are going to listen to, to people like him as opposed to men of the Lord for now, okay? That's going to change once Jacob trouble, Jacob's trouble hits, okay? Trust me, all right? Because then the men of the Lord, people are going to look for the men of the Lord's wisdom, right? They're going to look for the men of the Lord to sort of give them guidance, to give them insight to what's going on. Okay, but by then it's going to be too late. All right, anyway, I digress. Back to the scripture, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. Verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Jehoashai, Hamashiach is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Okay, and this is profound. All these scriptures are profound. There's so much wisdom, okay, in these scriptures, all right? Heavenly Father is telling you what the order is, okay? Wives, submit yourselves to the husbands, okay? You're the weaker vessel, all right? This is the order of the Heavenly Father. And the husbands are to submit themselves to Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, right? But the Heavenly Father lets us know that guess what? The husband is the head of the wife, okay? And this is the way the order is supposed to be, all right? But we don't see that anymore, right? We don't see that anymore. We see it in the reverse. We see the wife being the head of the husband, and that's reinforced throughout society, especially here in Babylon the Great, okay? And we've seen the influence that this place has had in terms of its wine, right? It's non-alcoholic wine, it's spiritual wine, it's philosophies, it's doctrines, it's policies, right? We've, we've seen its influence and its effect on the entire world, okay? Everybody's drunk off the wine of Babylon the Great. They've turned things upside down starting here in Babylon the Great, but guess what? All right, this same philosophy and mindset has spread like wildfire, uh, wildfire throughout the four corners of the world, okay? Now, we see some countries, such as China and Russia, you know, they've been, well, China fell victim to it, but they realized just how toxic this order is, okay? So, they called for the men of China to, to become men again, become masculine again. Because they become feminized, all right? Drinking the wine of Babylon the Great, okay? Therefore, as the church is subject unto Yahweh Shai, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, I'm not going to leave this out. Husbands, love your wives. And we're supposed to love our wives, okay? And most men, you know, want to love their wives. Okay, it's the wives that don't want to love their husbands. Okay, and this is why well, you may say, well, how is that so? Well, because the wives are the ones that are initiating divorce. 80% of marriages are initiated, or I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, 80% uh, of divorces are initiated by the woman. Salakia so came out wrong. 80% of the divorces today are initiated by the woman. Okay, and they're initiating divorces for bogus, ridiculous, very childish reasons. Okay, I'm bored um, you know, because of financial issues, and in most cases, because these women want to live beyond their means. Guess what? They get angry with the husband because he allowed them to rack up the credit cards, all right, put the whole family in debt. They get depressed and they want out. They want to run. Okay? They want to run to the next sucker who is successful and has a bunch of money that is going to be able to spend on. Right? They want to get away from that, that um, ball of chain called debt. Right? Or they want to ride the cock carousel. Okay? 
there's a variety of reasons why women initiate divorce today and they're very superficial and they're very wicked and they're self-centered and, and childish right and why is that because they have drunk or drank of the wine of the fornication of Esau Edom here in Babylon the Great Esau Edom is a so-called white man all right corrupting the entire world with his, his poison corrupting the minds of every man woman and child with the exception of the elect of the Heavenly Father okay husbands love your wives even as Yahweh Shai also loved the church and he indeed loves the church and the church is the elect of the nation of Israel and gave himself for it okay and he sacrificed himself for us for the elect of the nation of Israel okay no other nation you heathens will have no part of the inheritance of the Hebrew Israelites okay your lot is slavery and that's pursuant to the scriptures all right Let's go to the book of uh, Amos chapter 5 verse 10, okay? Because the truth is something that not everybody appreciates. Most people don't appreciate the truth. And we see that in the truth, right? We're, we've been teaching this gospel, preaching this gospel, okay, on highways and hedges. And we tell people what the Holy Scriptures say and mean, right? And a lot of what we say is pretty straightforward because it's coming straight from the Holy Scriptures. And you should be able to accept it and believe what it says if you claim to be a so-called Christian. You have to be, you have to believe what's written in the book, right? Most, I'd say 99.9% .9 of Christians, well, 100%, because if you're calling yourself a Christian, okay, you shouldn't be. Right? Because it is, in fact, a false religion, because it is contrary to to the Holy Scriptures. It's loosely based, and I do say loosely based on the Bible, okay? But the stuff that's written in the Holy Scriptures, they just discard, they overlook, they just dismiss it, okay? And when you bring it out, it doesn't fit the narrative of Christianity, guess what? They accuse you of playing Hebrew hopscotch, okay? And uh, manipulating the truth and all right they just they won't accept it they just won't accept it all right anyway it reads they hate him that rebuketh in the gate and they abhor him that speak uprightly now again I'm going to reference Kevin Samuels because he had a large following right and what he said was truth and he had women calling in to him asking for his advice. And they would turn around and get angry with him. Not all of them, because some of them, they would have that aha moment while they're talking to him, right? Or he would just reinforce something that they were probably already told by a previous boyfriend or an ex-husband or uh, someone else that they might have heard or had to talk, uh, talk with, right? So he's reinforcing exactly what they already knew okay or some of them didn't know at all but when he got done with them they would listen right because they respected his opinion you know they did to some degree that's why they called in okay they were looking for answers right so they did hate him okay and, and I'm not saying he was rebuking in the gate at all right because he wasn't in the truth it's the prophets that rebuke in the gate Okay, but he did bring to light a lot of the uh, uh, tomfoolery and uh, disorder amongst you women. Okay, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Okay, it's a righteous hatred. All right, they speaketh up, uh, they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Okay, and obviously this is referring to the prophets. Okay, because if you're not in the truth, you can't speak uprightly right but this is a good um, scripture because it does describe the the sentiment of women when they hear the truth right they, they can't handle the truth like the saying goes all right and that was taken from that movie a few good men but it's it's a lot of truth in that 
that line, right? You can't handle the truth. And everybody should be able to handle the truth, okay? Truth can be harsh. Truth can be hard to swallow, like, like a bitter pill. But it's truth nonetheless, and it has to be, it has to be accepted, okay? You don't have to like it. The truth is not there for you to like or dislike, okay? It's there for you to accept, okay? You can like it, choose to like it, or not like it, right? And see, men are generally more objective and more logic-based. So men are able to uh, handle the truth. Now, I may say, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I have to say that a lot of men nowadays can't handle truth because they've been raised by women, all right? And if they've been raised by women, they've been taught and conditioned to, um, to lead by emotion, right? To make decisions based on how they feel instead of using the eye of objectivity, okay? Instead of being able to reason things or reason through things. No, they're led strictly by their emotions, all right? Because they're emotional. And why are they emotional? Because they've been raised in single parent uh, households, okay? Primarily led by women, okay? And that's what you're going to get when you have a woman leading the household, right? And raising men or young boys to become men, all right? They're going to be feminized. And Esau Edom knew what he was doing when he started this whole femini uh, feminist movement, right? He knew what the outcome would be. Okay, and this is what you, this is what it is. This is what that outcome was supposed to be. He's achieved his goal, okay, which was to divide and conquer. And he's done that. He's conquered. He's divided, all right, the Israelite male from the Israelite woman. He's torn apart that family, and he's destroyed and conquered the minds, right? And that's how he was able to divide and conquer, or divide, Right? And that's why you see all these divisions, because he was able to conquer the minds of the Israelite woman by way of feminism. Okay? I'm going to finish up with another scripture here. See, and you, you may wonder, why are you brothers so angry? Why are you always going in on the woman? Okay? Well, we go in on the woman because of this disorder. Okay? It's profoundly disordered. Here in Babylon the Great, okay? And it's oppressive, uh, oppressive, Salakia, right? This disorder is, is oppressive because not only do we have out of order women, but we also have out of order heathens, okay? We're being ruled over by base men. Esau Edom, the so called white man, right? He's considered a base man, a base nation of people that have exalted themselves, okay? the heavenly father because he, he did that to punish us right this is a punishment and this is the ultimate in punishment having the having the base of people the most base of people ruling over you telling you what to do right taking the moral high ground whether they, when they're doing wickedness in your face left and right okay telling you you're the wicked one and they're the righteous Right? It's oppressive. And what does the scripture say about oppression? Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Right? Oppression. I just told you what it was. We are oppressed. When you don't have your own currency, right? You got to look at the face of heathens on your currency. When you don't have control over everything in your home because it's ruled by the, the woman, okay, because she all she has to do is threaten to call 911 and you're through, right? You can't raise your children the way you want to. You can't instill moral values in your children. You can try. But once they go out there to uh, society, right, in those indoctrination farms called schools, then you are asked out if you're not in this truth. 
your kids most likely will be indoctrinated. And we can see it happening. And it's spreading like wildfire. We can see the corruption or the corrupt minds amongst our people, especially the heathens, them too. Okay? But our people are worse than the heathens, it seems like sometimes. Signing on with that, that foolishness. You know, that alphabet foolishness. and Oh man, don't get me started. Politics, voting for the devil. Okay, you got two devils, a Republican and a Democrat. We got our people flocking to the, the polls, voting for a devil, trying to choose the lesser between two evil. How crazy is that? Again, this is the land of confusion, Babylon the Great. Right? Let's read that again. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad, and the gift destroyeth the heart. Okay? The gift, feminism. Okay, it corrupts the heart, which is the mind. Okay? In Hebrew, the word for mind, the heart, is lab. Okay? It simply means the mind. Okay? Gift destroyeth the heart. Right? And we've had many gifts from Esau, Eden. All right? Think about welfare. And you see the correlation between that gift and how it destroyed the heart or destroyed the mind because these people our people the Israelites especially not to say that they're not Edomites in fact they're more Edomites on welfare right and look at the small hatters the wall humpers over there they get welfare to the tune of 15 billion dollars every year and they have been for the past 70 years right that's another story for another time okay but welfare how did it corrupt the hearts or corrupt the minds of Israelites? It corrupted the minds because it teaches you how to depend on the government. Okay? Daddy Esau. All right? And our women. Oh, man. They took that and ran with it. You got generations on welfare. Okay? And it started back in the 60s. Here it is, 2022. You got you know, great-grandchildren. On welfare still, right? Great grandmama, she started it and just passed it down as a family heirloom. Okay? And that's how it destroys the heart. It corrupts you. It teaches you. It, and, and it uh, enables you. Right? That's exactly what it does. They don't give you a lot. They give you just enough to survive. Just enough to be dependent on. You don't make a come up. Right? You make just enough to buy yourself some food and pay your bills, and that's pretty much it. That's Esau, right? All right, let's go to the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 10, and we're going to wrap it up. Because this is the mindset of our people, men and women, but especially the women, because again, they hate the truth. They hate righteousness. They hate order, okay? So you get someone... Promoting feminist uh, feminism, so Hakia, then guess what? They're going to take hold of it and they're going to run with it. They're going to internalize it. And that's what you see today. I'm a strong black woman. Foolishness. Which say to seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, righteous things. Don't tell us about the laws of the Heavenly Father, don't tell us about evil that we're doing speak unto us smooth things prophesy deceits lies tell us lies okay tell us that being out of order is okay tell us feminism is okay right tell us we don't need to follow the laws of the Heavenly Father the laws are done away with okay tell us the sweet Jesus is gonna rapture us away Okay, that's the prophecy I want to hear. Okay, I don't want to hear that he's coming back in the chariots and he's going to destroy anyone who hasn't established their faith and belief in him and anyone who hasn't followed his laws, statutes, and commandments. I don't want to hear that. I just want to hear that sweet Jesus loves me. I don't have to follow the laws and I'm going to heaven, right? And that's it. I'm going to get raptured away out of here. That's what I want to hear. All right, but the prophets are not telling that telling you you people that uh, that those lies those, those those deceits the prophets are telling you the truth as it relates to the scriptures okay 
Remember, there will not be any guile found in the mouth of the prophets when uh, when Yahweh Shai returns. Okay. All right. Anyway, I, I just wanted to. Uh, this went longer than I thought I, I wanted it to. Um, I hope this was edifying. I want to say all praise to the Most High Yahweh Bahashem. Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahaha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders, the great millstone, pushing his doctrine of truth to the nation of Israel, who is scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy. Till next time, Shalom.